How's it going everyone? So tonight what I'm doing is uh, on this transmission, this is a Chrysler A520 5-speed transmission that I've installed a limited slip differential into. Now when you replace the stock differential uh, in these transmissions with uh, a new uh, differential like this OBX, you need to set the end play and the preload uh, for the differential otherwise it's going to clunk around and can probably destroy itself. So the way you do this uh, from what I understand is you need to tilt the transmission over to where it's vertical, uh, place the differential in here, tighten it down, and then you set this dial indicator up on to the very edge of it. Uh, and what I got going on in the bottom is I have a long extension that's going through the bottom and it's going and contacting the ring gear inside. Uh, and what you do is you push up on this extension down here and you push upward and it's going to uh, give you how much end play or how much the differential inside is moving this way. Um, and then you have to set the end play with these Sonex shims. Uh, these are uh, 0 0.005 thick each. Um, this is the part number. Sonax 39539-Z5. But the required end play needs to be 0 0.006 to 0 0.012. So what we're going to do is we're going to measure the end play three times. And we're going to average it out. Uh, after we do that, we're going to do some quick math and figure out how many shims we need to add to get it within uh, within spec. So let's go ahead and take the first measurement. Okay, just real quick, as you see, I've got the dial indicator set. And if I tune it a little bit, I can tune it to go either in or tune it out. We want to set it just at zero to where it's just barely going to read it. Uh, okay. So let's take our first measurement. Here goes measurement number one. 40.5. Here's measurement number two. 41. Okay. Let me dial this back a little bit. Measurement number three. 39.5. Okay, so here we go. So we took these three measurements, added them out, and this is what our uh, total end play is currently as of right now. So the average of these came out to 0 0.0403. So since we're only worried about uh, a number into the thousandth place, we're going to take this 3 and round down, and we end up with 0 0.040, so 40 thousandths. So this is our current end play that we have right now. So we need to get this number into a range between 6 thousandths and 12 thousandths. So what the, what the target I want to set is I want to be smack dab in the middle of these two numbers. So... <clears throat> Our target number for our end play is going to be 0 0.009, so 9 thousandths. So we need to get this number down to 0 0.009. So what we need to do, we're going to take our current end play, which is 0 0.040. We're going to subtract our target, and we're going to end up with a number that's going to tell us how many shims we need to add. So this number here is going to tell us how many of these shims we need to add into the transmission uh, in order to get our end play down to uh, our acceptable, acceptable range. So we need 31 thousandths worth of shim in order to get to that number there. So we know that each shim is 0 0.005, so five thousandths. 
Well, we already, we can make this simple. We can go 31 divided by 5. We'll go into it six times with a remainder of 1. So, I'm not worried about the remainder. I already know that I'm going to use six shims. Now, six shims multiplied by 0 0.005 is going to give us 0 0.030's worth of shims. So, once we have this number, this is the actual amount of uh, shims we can add. We can't do 7 because that's going to give us uh, 0 0.035 worth of shim, and that's going to be out of our range. So once we have this number, we're going to take this number here and subtract it from our current end play. So 0 0.040 minus 0 0.030 is going to give us 0 0.010. I'm sorry, y'all didn't see that. So if we add six shims or 30 thousandths worth of shims to our current end play, our end result should be 0 0.010 on the digital scale up here which is within our acceptable range so now that we've got the math figured out um, I'm gonna go ahead and tear apart. part I'm gonna take the differential cover off and start adding my shims in here and then we'll remeasure to make sure that we get into with this within this range and once we're within spec the transmission can be uh, torqued down, bolted together completely, and then we should be good to go. So I'm back, and uh, I couldn't get everything done uh, last night, so I had to come back during the day to finish this out. But I managed to knock out the old race out of the driver's side um, carrier bearing assembly. It's the side that's on uh, the driver's side on the uh, transmission was going to be that side there. And we're going to be replacing it with a Timken race. Uh, come on, zoom in. There we go. Timken 778-08. Um, so we're going to be replacing with uh, that new race. Um, when you're taking this uh, side out, there's a little grease bearing field gate thing that you have to knock out. That comes out pretty easily, just a couple light taps. Uh, with an extension or something it'll come out but um, once that is out on this side here you can actually gain access to uh, the lip of the old race and you can knock it out so these are sorry, these are both my new Timken races okay so this is the old race so I knocked that out with a, um, a punch so anyway as you can see this is the original shim that came from the factory for the old differential. And what we're going to do is we're going to leave this sitting right in there. So what I was told, or what I've read on the forums, is you want to add shims to the driver's side of the transaxle only. Um, I could be wrong. It could be right. I don't know. All I need to know is that I need to get my end play within spec. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my six shims, I'm going to stack them on top of the existing shim, then we'll press in our new race, and then we'll bolt it all back together, and then we'll, uh, we'll remeasure. Alright, so I got my shims all separated. Uh, I know they came in a pack of 10, so I got 1, 2, 3, 4 there. And I got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six so i know i need six shims to get stacked under here so make sure when you take them apart you don't have them sticking together um due to the oil that's uh that keeps them together so uh, make sure you actually have 10 when you get these uh when you get these out there we go just gonna take all six of these place them right in there Yeah, they're just gonna sit in there now they're gonna be a little bouncy and everything but those will get compressed when you put the uh, the new race on there so we'll go ahead and get the race on there real quick okay before I go on I wanted to show you all this this is a uh, Maddox 
uh, bearing race and seal driver set. I picked this up from Harbor Freight for about 30 bucks. And what's neat about this is they come with these tapered uh, uh, adapters that fit perfectly into the races. There's the other Timken race, and this is a uh, 63 millimeter that comes in, in the set. And it just sets ever so perfectly right in there. So what you do, or what I'm going to do, is I'm take this, set it in there. It comes with this nifty little adapter, and you unscrew it on the bottom. Then push it through the middle of the adapter. Once you do that, you take the little bolt and you screw it in there. Like so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it on here. And I'm going to gently tap, tap it in, tap, tap the race in with this uh, rubber mount that I got from Harbor Freight for 3 bucks. So that's how we're going to seat the race. As gently and as carefully as we can. Alright, so I brought it out here in the light so you can see. So that sealer set uh, with a rubber mallet actually worked pretty well. It didn't go down in any kind of awkward angle. Uh, so I'm confident that it went down uh, perfectly fine without a press. As long as you use a rubber mallet and that adapter set. But um, now that it's in there, and the shims are in there, um, we'll go ahead and bolt it back up to the transmission, torque everything down, and then we'll check our end play. So everything's torqued back together. Uh, and bolted down. Uh, as you can see, it's missing a sealer in here, um, the CV axle seal. I have two new ones I'm going to be putting in on this side and on the passenger side. Um, but as you remember from earlier in the video, our target that we're trying to get to is 0 0.010 or 10 thousandths. So our original target was we wanted to get smack dab in the middle of this range, which was 6 thousandths to 12 thousandths. So we can only add so many shims. We added six shims for 30 thousandths of shim that we added to our old end play, which was uh, 40 thousandths. So what we're going to go ahead and do is take our three measurements, uh, average them out, and that's going to give us our final end play, which we'll compare up against the, the range, and if it's within spec, then we know we're good to go. So before I go on, um, if you're wondering, this micrometer and this stand, uh, it's a magnetic base. You can pick these up from uh, Harbor Freight. Um, I forget the pricing, but I'll, <clears throat> I'll go ahead and put the uh, part numbers for them right here at the bottom of the video. Um, and when you set this, you want to make sure that the gauge is set to zero. And this is, it's got a tilting mechanism here. You just screw down until you start seeing it go up in numbers. And you back it off back to zero. So let's go ahead and take our three measurements. Okay, so measurement number one. 0 0.08. Measurement number two. 0 0.08. Measurement number three. 0 0.08. So we got our three measurements. They all came out to eight thousandths in play on each one. So average those out pretty easily. Comes out to 0 0.08. So our final end play is eight thousandths worth of end play. So if we go out back to our required end play that's required uh, to spec, it's going to be between six thousandths and twelve thousandths. So 0 0.008 is between 0 0.006 and 0 0.012. So now that we know we have the right end play, we can bolt it all together and throw it back into the car. Or at least bolt it to the engine way over there. But um, there's a secondary way we can test to make sure that this is within spec. <clears throat> and that's to take a, a torque wrench um, with a dial indicator on it uh, in inch pounds and uh, measure the turning torque. Uh, on the input shaft. Unfortunately I don't have that tool so I'm gonna go off of this indicator right here and uh, our results and call it good. One last thing before we go, can't forget to put these new seals in there. 
They're gonna go just all right on top right there. And they come in these little box from uh, Duralast. They had them in stock. We're gonna take this little rubber mallet and we're just gonna tap it in. Obviously it goes in better when I don't have a phone, but. Mwah, pretty, look at that. Professional installation. Yeah. Can't wait to put it in Omni. And get that motor going with that big old massive turbo sitting right there. It's gonna be glorious. So, Alright, thanks for watching.